Hello, so this is episode 6, uh, re-edited. So, what happened is that I, I realized that MCOR actually uses a technology called Selective Deposition Lamination, which is though similar to LOM, there are distinctive differences and distinctive improvement over the previous technology. So, for the first slide, I'll be explaining the difference between the LOM and SDL. So yeah, let's begin. So for there are like four main differences as I can see between LOM and SDL now, selective deposition lamination. So the first difference is that the LOM process adhesive glue is actually applied uniformly in equal amounts throughout the cross section. However, for selective deposition lamination, adhesive glue is selectively applied on the cross-section. For example, more adhesion adhesive is placed on the part than on the support material. So this improves the removal of the part after the print. So the next difference is in that for LOM, the adhesive was pre-applied to the material itself. However, for SDL, adhesive is deposited in droplets during the process. So I think this saves on the material cost, lowers the material cost for SDL. Next for LOM, LOM actually uses a laser cutter to cut because LOM could use other materials other than paper. However, for SDL, it uses a tungsten carbide blade instead. So that's a difference. The last difference I could see is that for LOM, it requires infiltration of the printed part for better strength, possibly. And in SDL, it is stated that it did not require infiltration of the printed part. So yeah. I want to credit this reference to Julie Reese, who commented to explain the difference between the two to, to me. So thanks. So as for the rest of the episode, I recognize that there are some overlap or some mix up between the two processes now because LOM is a method that can be used for other materials other than paper. However, for SDL, it's mainly for paper. So, it's important to keep in mind in this episode the difference between the two. So, yeah. So, for the aims and learning objective, the aims, once again, is to just provide factual knowledge on the process and the application of the LOM technology. The learning outcomes is hopefully that you're able, you'll be able to describe how the LOM process works, states the advantages and disadvantages of the LOM process and lastly to state an application or tool from the LOM process. So yeah. For the first learning outcomes, we will talk about the process of the LOM. So there are five steps. Firstly, a sheet of paper or sheet of material is placed onto the build plate. Tentatively, there are there is some glue on the build plate so you can attach the first sheet onto it. The second step is the application of the glue. So more glue will be applied on within the cross section of the part and less glue will be applied on the outside of the cross section. Next, the, a new sheet of paper or a new sheet of material will be placed on top of the previous sheet and, and there will be high pressure press that will bond the two sheets together. Next, the sheet will be cut either by a tungsten blade or a carbon dioxide laser. So you cut in a in a square fashion. So within the cross section you can see the you'll see that the cuts are finer and on the outside of the cross section the squares are bigger. So this process repeats itself and eventually you, you'll form a paper model or 3D model, so yeah.
So next we'll move on to the advantages and disadvantages of the LOM process. So firstly the advantages. So because the material is in a sheet form, so there's a wide range of material you can use as long as the cutter that cuts the material is strong enough you can use the material and that the glue is able to join the two sheets together you can use the material next advantages is that there is no need to add additional support because the the sheets that surrounds your part acts as the support itself so that's very good but this also means that it is a bit it, it is a very tedious to remove the support material because the support material is like totally surrounding your part so there's quite a lot of wasted materials next is a very fast process because because what you're doing is that you're just cutting the contour of your cross section you're not actually filling the entire cross section you're just going through the perimeter of your cross section so these are the three advantages so now for the disadvantages of the LOM process, it, it is difficult to fabricate thin geometries or complex thin geometries because the thin geometries, firstly the cross section is very small so the application of glue will be quite difficult because this, each, cross, each thin cross section has to join to each other and it's also very difficult to cut very thin strips of material. So. So the next disadvantages is that the strength of your part depends on the adhesive strength of the glue especially in the Z axis because it is the glue that's actually bonding your part together so this is a point to take note lastly if the material that you are using is your normal printing paper then a disadvantage could be the absorption of water might warp the part, might distort the part so this is this is a disadvantage based on what material you use. So as for the application, full colored models can be produced for visualization and form fitting. So this is a very unique unique application and advantage of the LOM process because each sheet can be printed out in full color and then then it is later used to join up one by one. Next application is in the use of a functional part. So I found this off a textbook which said that LOM is, has been used to create a hot gas manifold for the space shuttle. So this is a metallic part. So the sheets they use are made out of metallic. So you join the metallic piece together and surprisingly strong enough to create functional parts. Lastly, LOM can be used in the creation of patterns and molds. So traditionally, some molds have been made out of wood. So LOMs, when you use the printing paper and you use LOM technology, the final part is very similar to wood. So you can, you can use it to make patterns and molds of very complex shapes probably. So this is the last application. So yeah. So I've actually finished presenting all the factual knowledge that I want to present for this episode on the LOM. So now I would, I would want to encourage a bit more active learning. So I'll give you three, three questions in which you'll sort of be able to think what the answers are and hopefully it will better your understanding and your memorization of what I've said. So firstly, could you can you describe the LOM process? What are the five stages that I said? Can, and the next question would be, could you state two advantages and disadvantages of the LOM process in your mind now? So, and lastly, could you state one application of the LOM technology? Like how would you use the LOM technology if you have something like that in your school, laboratory, or in your company? So, take a while to think this through so yeah so yes I, I hope you took the last one minute to think through the questions so here are the answers so once again the LOM process there are five steps so first you lay the material down then you apply glue so 
within the cross section of the part there is more glue applied as compared to outside of the cross section then you lay an, another material on top of the glue so and you bond the glue you bond the two pieces of material together and lastly you cut out the slice then you repeat the process so as for the advantages and disadvantages firstly LOM process is cheap because you are using printing paper and you can use printing paper if you want and it's also quick because you're just cutting the perimeter of the cross-sectional cross-section you're not actually filling each cross-section disadvantages of LOM is that it, there's a limitation when if you want to print out small complex geometries because it's very difficult to cut very fine pieces of materials and lastly the strength of the material is very limited to the glue that you use for the last question that I want you to think was the could you name an application of LOM so the most prominent application is in the full color prototype for visualization and fit forming this is a very very unique advantage that LOM has on the laminated object manufacturing method so these are the references uh, the textbook rapid prototyping principles and applications and from my graduate studies the module that I took prototyping and rapid prototyping from NTU and the picture on the content page by the third reference and lastly the illustration showing the process of LOM is the fourth reference so, so lastly I would like to thank Julie Rees from for enlightening me the difference between LOM and SDL so the, her reference is the one below so I thank you once again and I really like comments that will clarify my learning of 3d printing so it creates better knowledge that way so yeah thank you again and stay tuned for episode 7 then thank you